Arise, champion! This is the world famous Steve Weatherford Show, where each week we bring you stories, messages, and guests to create massive breakthroughs in your life. Somebody say greatness! This show has been strategically designed to accelerate you. Call a friend and tell him Steve Weatherford is home. What's up, friends? Welcome back to another episode of the Steve Weatherford Show. And sometimes when my wife's with me, I feel a whole lot more confident to not prepare a ton of notes and to wing it. But this is actually going to be a little bit different um, of a podcast that I do with my wife because we're actually like over prepared for this. So we're going to take a ton of notes and really just condense them down. Uh, my wife and I have just got done creating a four part series for um, a small group coaching that we do that is primarily men, uh, but a large number percentage of those men are married. And so oftentimes my wife will come in and uh, kind of give her perspective um, and and wisdom on on transformation and what it looks like to follow Christ and lead a a, a family with a biblical worldview. Um, so the first question that I would have for you, and this this will kind of like pre qualify you, or get you to move to the next YouTube video, or maybe turn the volume up. Do you want to grow? Sounds like a like a generic question, but I really want you to sink in and I want you to, to like receive this portion of the growth. Are you willing to pay the price that growth requires? And sometimes paying your price is putting down control and and surrendering some things or surrendering everything. And so I'm going to give you, we're going to do our best to give you the 10 or 11 minute version of a question that we've been asked a lot. And, and the question is, what has been your X factor? People will ask me that separately. People have asked you that separately. And people have asked us what's been the X factor in, in our growth in our marriage. And, and I feel like, because we're on social media and, we, and I share a lot, I say we, I share a lot and you allow me to share portions of our life. Um, but for a lot of years, it would be a very tactical answer. And so I would love for you to share with people who are watching on YouTube. By the way, thank you for watching on YouTube. We're just now getting into YouTube. <laughs> We're about 10 years late. Um, and so thank you for watching on YouTube. If you can give this a thumbs up and subscribe. We pump stuff out at least once per week. So thank you for that. Um, but the question that I had for you is, what are some of the tactical answers that have led us to be able to uncover the X factor and then to walk in the X factor? Yeah. So the first one that is a marriage, you're talking about in our marriage mainly. Um, yeah, I think you can talk about in your marriage, but some of those things w have helped us individually also. Right. So the ones that we had talked about were date nights. Mm-hmm. Once a week, non-negotiable. Okay. There you go. There you go. Personality differences. So we would take a personality test, uh -huh. see where we were at. Mm -hmm. It was one of the first things that... And those have been very helpful. Yes, those, that was one of the first things we were told to do to really see because we often want to be right and we really think that we're right. Mm -hmm. And we are both right if you're viewing it through the lens that we were actually born with, which is... Mm -hmm different for everybody so that was good for us um nightly debriefs so it really forced communication mm -hmm. um if you're not a great communicator it gave you at least talking points to start your your nightly conversations and then we did like intentional group tribe people that we felt like helped point out our weaknesses and built us up and supported us to be better yeah not not just people that make you feel good about yourself Right. And that's good too. Yep. Um, so what I'm hearing you say is we used to say the X factor was, oh, you know, our marriage started getting better when we started making date night every seven days, non-negotiable. Um, <laughs> it's not even that we thought that all the time. It was hard to place what the X factor was. That's good. Okay, good. Share a little bit about, about that. So I was reviewing. I know. I feel like a lot of people think, well, everyone wants an easy answer. Right. Like, oh, go on date night every seven And that's going to change it. Uh -huh. And so... It might, it might shift Although things. it did, and it's like, they're super helpful. Mm -hmm. 
And they definitely like help with growth in communication and deeper relationships. But like that alone Mm -hmm. wasn't getting us there. Mm -hmm. So I think that they're really great and to put into implementation. And I think if you're at a point where you don't really know what your X factor is, it's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you already know, it's a great place to get better. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing you say is, the tactical things that we didn't necessarily say were the X factor, but when people said, what's the X factor, we rattled off these four things. I'm hearing you say date night, non-negotiable. I'm hearing you say coaching and mentoring, meaning you get a coach and a mentor. I get a coach and a mentor. And in a perfect world, we get mentoring together. Um, I'm also hearing you say communications, communication exercises daily. Mm -hmm. And I'm also hearing you say, getting plugged into a church and an intentional group of people who challenge you, who keep you accountable, but also who honor and encourage you. Yep. Um, And through all of those things, we realized that that wasn't the X factor, but what that did was that got us one step closer to realizing what the X factor was. All four of those things allowed us to get awareness, right? You can't it's really difficult to level up in an area that you don't have awareness that you're weak or that you're deficient. And so through us doing these different things like coaching and mentoring, for an example, you allow someone into your life. You trust them with some vulnerable things. You have conversations and then you unoffendedly let them speak into your life. Um, And so through awareness, what I, in a separate conversation we had in preparation before, um, our coaching call is awareness gave us hope, right? And when I asked her what hope is, her and I agreed that hopelessness is like being in complete darkness in a cave. But hope, hope is seeing just a glimmer of light and in, in, in you having the epiphany or the realization that I'm not actually in a cave, I'm in a tunnel. And, and through our discussions of having that we both agreed that hope was great, but hope still brought difficulty. And so my question to kind of cue you into your preparation is, is how did you find your X factor? Well, I mean, it's our X factor, right? But I want to know personally for you. And then also as you're sharing that you can use me as an example because right. when I, want you I to have been leading you like come in anytime but it, it's just it's almost like a it's so interesting when you have a relationship <laughs> with Jesus that you're never supposed to feel alone mm-hmm. but a lot of the things that I was being taught or however you want to word it, it was like how hard it was to be a Christian mm-hmm. and how hard it was to write to make the right decisions and how hard it was to stay married and how hard it was. So what you think about is what expands. So I'm sitting here all day thinking about how hard life is. Mm. And it goes, if, if you read the Bible and you, you believe that it's truth, it, it's not that God doesn't present challenges to you and that you're going to have challenge after challenge after challenge. But the decisions that you make and the, and the feelings that you get shouldn't be despair or depression or or, loneliness or anxiety. Maybe you can share something personally of yourself that in the past, something that used to debilitate you and control how you made decisions and, and what the X factor is. I think you can reveal that now. Okay. So the X factor in, in our family's life I mean, in general, but on the earth, on the earth. But what we put our like flag and and have it is is the movement of the Holy Spirit and being led by the Holy Spirit. And once you're led by them, all of these tactical things just make life a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's a misconception around the Holy Spirit and what what it actually means, what it is and what it isn't. And we're going to get to that. But when I feel like I'm in control of like making the right decision all of the time and it's like it's going to be hard it it gives me control it gives me control over my life and my decisions which is actually hard right why why don't you share and I also believe the honor is due you've learned a lot from 
a pastor on we watch YouTube videos of a pastor named um, Robert Morris. Yes. And you have personally He's a great teacher. Yes. Um, and teacher. I also feel like uh, Pastor Jurgen Matisius. Yes, and great teacher. He's the one that really kind of helped me to experience the Holy Spirit, but then also to understand what I was experiencing, and that changed the trajectory of our family. Right. But I feel like your your breakthrough or your embrace of Holy Spirit being a regular part of your life came a little bit after. So. Because you're more of an intellectual person. I'm an intellectual person. and, and So tell me what you've learned okay. from, from Robert Morris and how just in the last six months, I, I can tell a, like a very noticeable difference in how you lead your emotions, which in turn has really impacted how you and I build right. family and business and do ministry together. So I'm going to try to use, say this like as simple as possible, but going back to hard like hard is exciting for some people. Like you like a challenge. Some people yeah, like I mean, a challenge. every morning I've shared this on my podcast plenty yeah. of times, but one of the poems that I read to myself every morning is by one of my mentors, Keith Kraft. And it's a poem called choose your heart. And it's just my daily morning reminder that, that life will have some difficulties, but I don't want the difficulties of regret. I don't want the difficulties of, paying my price 10 years from now in my health when I could pay my price a little bit every day in my daily disciplines. And so, yes, to your point, and then I'll put you back on track, that definitely challenges me. And I feel like for some and most men, that's what we want. We want something to overcome. We want a, a mountain to climb. We want um, a territory to overtake. Um, so talk to me about what hard means to you so when someone says it's going to be hard and every decision that i make is going to be hard and my life is always going to be hard i'm an overthinker mm -hmm. i'm a rule follower and i'm a person who wants to get it right mm -hmm. so, my, my wife would make a wonderful mormon and so when you're saying do it god's way i want a playbook of what that looks like mm -hmm. what is god's way mm -hmm. and i don't ever feel like anyone I don't want to say anyone. I don't feel like it's explained very well. Like, what mm -hmm. is God's way? I know the Ten Commandments. I know first ba based upon Based upon your childhood and, and my yes, childhood. Yes, my childhood and your childhood of right. like. It was not explained well to us. It was not uh, correct. My, my parents did a wonderful job of bringing me in church. But I also believe, based upon conversations we've had as adults, my dad didn't want to make the mistake of of bringing us around people that were phonies. Right. You know, and, and, and I feel like, and you touched on it earlier, that that the enemy has perverted and manipulated the greatest, most powerful thing on this earth to be something that we should stay away from or not talk about. Right. So the Holy Spirit, it's like, and that's what Robert Morris actually says, like, if it's all the enemy really had to do. Mm. Like, it's not a, in the Bible, in the truth. It's not a choice. Like, we were given Holy Spirit for power and authority and anointing. Like that's, that's where it comes from. So if the enemy can get you to believe that it's unnecessary mm -hmm. or only for the weirdos, then he already won. He got right. you. Right. Like life is going to be really, really hard forever. Right. Like, and tell me, well, tell me if you're telling me, if you're telling me that it's going to be really, really hard if I never, if I never encounter Holy Spirit or partner yeah. with Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. tell, me, tell me more about that. Well, let me start with this. 2 Peter 1 4. Mm -hmm. We're going to listen to the. Take us to this. the scriptures, Mama. 2 Peter 1 4. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So he's saying we can actually escape mm. those desires if we participate in the divine nature. Jesus was 100% human and 100% divine. We are 100% human, mm. but the Holy Spirit is 100% divine. Mm -hmm. So how do we get divine nature? Mm. Like, that is our gift. That is our promise. Mm. So it goes forward. Um, so for us, as I'm reading my notes, it says that 
because I follow rules, I take pride in that. I take pride in the fact I do it right. Mm -hmm. I take pride in the fact I do it really good. Mm -hmm. But there really is no room for ego and pride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like how, how do I let go of ego and pride, which also equates letting go of control? Mm -hmm. X factor again, Holy Spirit. If I know he is in charge, God's in, in charge, and he doesn't just, like I'm not just forgiven for my sins, mm -hmm. which is amazing because we sin every day. So like, thank you. He's leading us every day. So he lights the path. He is the playbook. The Holy Spirit is the one that allows you to feel convicted, to feel righteousness, to lead your path. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily me always making my decisions. It's me trusting <laughs> and having faith that God is putting that path in front of me for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah, so I'm going to jump in and, mm -hmm. and share a few things of what the Holy Spirit is. And then I want Ooh. you to share with me what the Holy Spirit is not. Mm. So the Holy Spirit, when people say like, oh, man, I felt it in my gut and I should have listened to my gut. I knew I shouldn't have gone into that store and done that thing or drank that drink or unlocked that car for that woman. That, that conviction, mm -hmm. that's the Holy Spirit. Um, and sometimes like we don't like that, you know, mm -hmm. but we learn later on that we should have trusted it. That's not your gut. That's not Jiminy Cricket. It's not your conscience. It's the spirit of the Lord. That is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your comforter. When you are destitute and you hear people just like Job, you know, the story of Job, man, this guy just, this guy just got torn up by the enemy and he cried out to God in desperation and he was comforted he was comforted by the holy spirit god spoke to him through the holy spirit he's also your partner holy spirit is your partner holy spirit is your friend holy spirit is your god jesus god holy spirit they were all on the same level. Is there anything that I've missed? They're equal. Um, They're equal, yeah. I just so said that. Holy Spirit, like, I, I wrote it down more in like a columns. <laughs> I just. I know. Yeah, we're different. We're different. It's, it's, it's good. It's That's why we're a good team. God makes the it. The enemy good. did not want us to like unite this way, especially on something like this. So he is not an it or thing. Mm. A lot of people refer, refer it to it as like it. It is doing this. It yeah. is upon us. He. It's a he. It's a he. Um, it's a I can't say it's a he. He's it's, a he. Yeah, he. He's a he. And he's 100% divine. He is not just for people at one gathering back in the day when. An axe. Yes, when Jesus said like, you're going to have it. it. He's for us. And if you want to read that, you can read that. Here it is. Do you want me to read in Matthew or? No, I have, no, that one's for something. That's for next one. Okay. Peter Acts 2, 38 and 39 says, Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So he is not just for back then. He is for now. It says it very clearly. It's he is for now. He is the promise that we were given. He is the giver of gifts. He himself is the gift because he is the giver of gifts. So people get it confused because they think Holy Spirit is like, oh, you're speaking in tongues and you're doing healings and you're doing. That is a gift that he gave you. Mm -hmm. It's. And, but it's a spiritual gift. He is the giver of the gift. Mm -hmm. So once you receive that, you're going to start seeing the miracles. You're going to start feeling the discernment. You're going to have the desire to listen to it. Mm -hmm. You have the desire to be led by it. Can you talk about discernment for you, for you specifically? I feel like people are listening to this right now, especially I feel like some husbands might listen to this and then bring their wives back to listen to this. And I do believe that wives, when they get married, they get discernment for their husbands. Mm -hmm. So talk to, talk to the husbands, but also just talk in general how the Holy Spirit and how relationships have, how, have helped you to embrace and accept Holy Spirit, but then also how 
you have realized what your spiritual gifting is? Mm. So for most of our relationship, I've always, <laughs> you say it, you call it the sixth sense. That's what I did always call it. Like gut feeling of like, oh, Steve, like, I don't know. Speak up just a little like, bit louder. That person, I don't, I don't know if that's a great friend for you. Mm. Or baby, I don't know if that person is like really here for you or trying to take on advantage it, man, of she you. She was right almost every time. Um, it actually caused a lot of problems in our relationship because he thought I just didn't want him to have any friends. But I really, that wasn't. It's because all the friends I were bringing around were freaking just trying to steal from us. or. But that was not what it was. But when we talked about it being the X Factor, a lot of people, these questions are about our relationship or with our kids. And I think that that's, I just want to hit on when it's the X Factor in our relationship, it's because we both feel like we allow Holy Spirit to lead us. So if I come to you now and I say, maybe I have a bad feeling about this person, you're not going to dismiss it and say, she's just overanalyzing them. She's just judgy. He's going to say, okay, like, is that your discernment? And if I say yes, he's going to say. I'll ask the question, is that your discernment or your flesh speaking? Right. It's a very clear question or because yeah. sometimes she, I mean, old, dad, old habits are dying, but she'll come to me and say, you should do this and you should do that. <laughs> But that, that's and a thing. I'll, that's not a person. And then I'll ask. That's a thing, not a person. That's an action. We talk, we're talking about people. Right. But I'll ask you, I'll say, is that your flesh or is that your discernment? And you'd be like, you're right. Right. That's my flesh. We have, so we've learned that sometimes like in actions when I tell them to do something, but when I say it about people, it's usually on. So, um, but in our relationship, that has been also on the flip side there have been big changes in our lives that I may not want to do. But if I, if you say like, I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm being called to do this. This is what our family's called to do. Then I believe that that's Holy spirit leading you. And, and I follow that. So I think that is the X factor for our relationship. But with kids too, someone brought up like, how do you like support relationships with your kids? And keep kids from going off like if you haven't been the best parent like going off and doing drugs or whatever they're concerned about and you and I talked about like the fact our kids have been raised seeing miracles feeling Holy Spirit like knowing like how do I word this signs miracles and wonders are normal for them (laughs) right but like but not just because of us because of who we've chosen to do life with and how they believe. This is really hard for me to say because I'm like not a huge feely person, but like the Holy Spirit is not just how you think. The Holy Spirit is a feeling that leads you. And if you try to say it's wrong all the time, which is what I did, like, and not that it was, it was just this time in life we were at, like, oh, am I jealous of this person? Am I over judging them? Am I over analyzing them? Like you start questioning that feeling that you get and then you don't, honor that feeling so you're not allowing the gift that God gave you to be able to even work in your life and that's why you start seeing all of these bad things happen so if your children have felt the Holy Spirit felt uh, a move of God <laughs> they can't deny it anymore well, so well, they might not always think right because we're human and they might not always make the right decisions because they're hard but they're gonna know at the end of the day God is real and I cannot deny it, period. So they will come back around because there's no denying it. He's real and he's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's faithful. What would you say to somebody that says, I can live my best life without Holy Spirit? Good luck. Why would you say that? Why would you say good luck? Because I lived a really great life on paper. And I like overthought, overanalyzed, was always afraid I was going to make the right decision or the wrong decision, sorry. I was always afraid you were going to make the wrong decision. I was always afraid my kids were going to make the wrong decision. And then you're trying to control everything. Mm. So you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders because you're, if, if I'm in control and there's no one above me in control, man, that's heavy. That is hard. Mm. So what I'm hearing you say is, If it wasn't for 
me giving permission and invitation for Holy Spirit to be in my life and to comfort me and to lead me, I would be debilitated by anxiety, fear. I don't know if would depression be in there. I don't know. I'm not saying every everybody is that. I'm not. I'm not placing labels on people, and I'm not giving judgment on no, what other people. Oh, for me personally, I'm for you. Um. Well, Erin McManus said it best. If you can face death and not have fear because you know it's already been conquered, you can face anything. Say that one more time. <laughs> if you can face death and not have fear because you know it's already been conquered, you can face anything. What I'm hearing you say is, I know that the rest of my life I'm working from victory instead of for it. Correct. And I, I just, if you go read, if you are a reader or you listen to books and it's something that you really need to understand, for me, it's in the Bible. It's very clear. There's a lot of book, like The Forgotten God, The God I Never Knew. There are books out there that explain it really, really well and really depth biblically and go through that, like, the Holy Spirit is a promise that we, we were given. And it's it's biblical. I mean, it's it's truth. So if you believe the Bible is truth, you're going to know that we are led by Holy Spirit. Mm. Well, I know that you have a whole lot more that you can share. Um, I believe that we're also going to do uh, a part two on the podcast, three and four. That will be a much condensed version of what we're teaching and, and coaching in the Freedom Council. Um, so today was part one of a freedom series because that's what I believe Holy Spirit has been for me. It has been for you. It has been for our son. It has been for our family. It's been freedom. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was freedom from trying to earn it, freedom from <sighs> lust, porn, pills, worthiness, childhood trauma, and for you, it's a different list, but it's same the same freedom. Um, so today we went over what Holy Spirit is and what Holy Spirit is not. Um, in the next one, we're going to do uh, the three baptisms that every Christian should have. And just to let you know, the Holy Spirit's a part of that one too. So I'm just going to pray for uh, everybody listening or watching this right now. and um, And I pray that this serves you i pray that it informs you i pray that it challenges you to go and check the scriptures for yourself because we certainly aren't um, certified or qualified but i believe that holy spirit qualifies you and also puts that burn in your belly to do things like what we're doing right now there could be a million reasons why we're disqualified from even speaking jesus's name but because of him uh we're promoted to do so so dear heavenly father thank you for this day uh thank you for every man woman um teenager child that could be hearing this right now god and we just pray that you would meet them exactly where they're at and god we just pray that they would repeat this after me holy spirit i give you permission holy spirit i give you permission to convict me to comfort me and to lead me god i know that i've made mistakes and and right now that i repent and that i get ask god that you would forgive me and and i ask that jesus would come live in my heart that he would heal my heart, that he would renew my mind. And I give permission for the Holy Spirit to enter me and to lead me. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. All right, guys, um, I appreciate being able to invest into you. Babe, I'm sure that you probably don't have any last words, but if you do, I wanted to make a chance. Good. Tell, hey, tell everybody right now, uh, leave a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Are you serious? Yeah. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you next week. That was wonderful. That was really good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week.